In code video number two, we're going to talk about how prolonged sitting can contribute to inflammation and the cytokine storm of COVID-19, in addition to other chronic health conditions. So if you recall from code video number one, one of the processes that can really elevate the damage in our body from a COVID-19 infection is this cytokine storm. And prolonged sitting can actually contribute to that storm created by our immune system, which can go on and damage our cells. So this first study here at the top showed that four hours of sitting disrupted by a simple three minute bout of intense exercise, lowered leg swelling and the levels of a cytokine called IL-8 among healthy, active and young adults. So that's an amazingly easy task. Four hours of sitting, three minutes of something intense. Maybe you go out for a run, get on an exercise bike, maybe you jump rope, maybe you do some burpees. You can pick something that makes you pretty breathless in three minutes. The second study showed that in female diabetics, for every hour reduction in sedentary time, their C-reactive protein went down by 24%. C-reactive protein, or CRP, is a blood marker for inflammation. So that could be representative of that cytokine, I'm sorry, that cytokine storm. Now, we know that prolonged sitting can contribute to that cytokine fire. It also contributes to major health conditions like obesity. By increasing body fat, it can increase blood glucose, elevate blood pressure, increase cholesterol, specifically blood triglycerides, and it makes us more out of shape, so our aerobic fitness gets worse. This is really important to keep in mind because prolonged sitting can independently increase the cytokine fire, but it also contributes to these conditions. And I put the top three in red because studies have shown that obesity, diabetes, and high blood pressure are major risk factors for severity of COVID-19 disease. So cytokine fire plus making these conditions worse is really two major insults to the COVID-19 flame. So how do we remedy this? Well, there is an approach called exercise snacking, and I love the term exercise snacking, where you're actually going to be snacking on activity and movement throughout the day. So the first step is you've got to stock your exercise pantry with a variety of different movements and exercises. I probably got over 25 to 30 different movements and stretches and things that I do um, throughout the week. And so every day I'm like, okay, today is a day where I need to open up my hips. I need to stretch my hamstrings. In the left diagram, you can see some of those exercises. For example, in the top left, I'm doing a semi-squat with this thick resistance band around my thighs to apply a little bit more challenge to that movement. Um, in the bottom diagram, I'm actually on my exercise bike with my laptop strapped to it. And while I'm cycling, I'm going through some emails. So stock that pantry with movement. The second thing is make sure you're actually visiting this pantry frequently. And that's simple to do. Just use a timer to set a reminder. Use your smartwatch, maybe your Apple Watch or Fitbit to set a reminder. They also have the you know trigger to basically remind you to stand up from sitting. Or just talk to your phone. Get your phone out and say, Remind me to move in 30 minutes. Remind me to do burpees or skip rope in 45 minutes, whatever it takes. The third step is snack on that activity for at least five minutes. That would be ideal. For more ideas around how to integrate work into physical activity, check out my survival guide. I put the link down here below. But again, if you can get into the habit and rhythm of interrupting sitting with all types of movements, you're going to feel better, you're going to keep that cytokine flame lower, and you're going to improve your metabolics, your blood pressure, your glucose, all those other chronic health risks. Thanks for watching. For my resources, download my free COVID ebook, subscribe to my YouTube co-video series, and follow me on Instagram.